Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. Today we have a very special game to analyze played between WIM Rachel Miller from Jamaica and WIM Jorgana Pacheva from Bulgaria. The games were played on leeches with a time control of 3 minutes plus 2 second increments from move on. Both players were playing a race of 7 points. So, of course, the first player to reach 7 points cumulatively would win the match overall. So, without much ado, let's jump right into the game. So, Rachel Miller with white opened with e4 and Picheva replied with c5. So, we have the Sicilian defense on the board. Rachel played knight f3 and we have knight c6 and Rachel replied with the Rosalima variation of the Sicilian defense. Of course, there are some benefits to this line. It does avoid the theory of the Sheshnikov, the Kalashnikov, the Four Knights, and so many other Sicilians. So, Jargana played g6, pretty standard treatment, and Rachel castled. Bishop g7, followed by c3. The idea behind c3, of course, is to play d4 to have a very strong center with white. Knight f6 was played and rook e1. Castling kingside, so the, both kings are out of the center, and Rachel replied with d3 instead of the standard d4. In the standard d4, black can reply with d5, and many other variations would follow. But she chose a, a very respectable d3 line. We have queen b6 attacking the bishop, and she replied with a4. After a4, we see d6, so making some room for the bishop to be developed. And Rachel replied with knight a3. Now, the interesting fact is if the knight's dream is to go to c4, it could have also been developed to, to d2. But maybe in some lines, the knight can also go to c3, to c3, c2 too as well. We don't know, so we will see what happens. Picheva plays bishop g4, and Rachel replied with h6, and she took the knight on f3. Of course, you don't want to develop the knight to the bishop to g4, only to play it back after a3. So bishop takes f3 is pretty much the only logical move. Queen takes, and we have knight d7. Rachel played queen g3 with ideas of f4, maybe f5, open up the king side and delivering checkmate, which is of course the, the aim. And Picheva played a4. Rachel replied immediately with bishop takes c6, followed by queen takes c6. But an interesting point to note, as we will see as the game goes on, Rachel could have played knight c4 in this position, gaining a vital tempo on the queen. Now, if queen c7, she could play bishop takes c6. And if queen takes c6 in this position, it is white to move, and white could play a5. But back to the game, and I'll show you why I showed you that line just now. So in this position, Rachel played bishop c6 immediately, and Jorgana took. Then Rachel played knight c4. Now the difference is in this position, it is now black to move, and black is starting to gain some form of initiative. Black played b5, immediately um, attacking the knight, because the knight is on a very strong square on c4, in which it's exerting some pressure on e5. Rachel took on b5, we have a takes, and rook takes a8, rook takes a8, and knight e3. Dragana replied with b4, and Rachel played knight e5, just protecting the c3 pawn, and also attacking e7. She is threatening knight takes e7 to just pick up the queen on, on e6. Sorry about that. Um, the program sometimes gets carried away. 
So we see King F8 from Dragana, which is causing black some some problems before black was in the driver's seat but this move um slipped a significant um, portion of the advantage a better move would have been bishop f8 and if bishop h6 of course black can't take the bishop on h6 because knight e7 check picks up the queen on c6 so after bishop h6 um black should reply e6 and bishop takes f8 king takes f8 knight e3 and in this position um the pawn in e6 is weak um, the knight can go back to c4 for the time being the pawn and c3 is not being attacked White can make some progress with playing queen h4 to attack the pawn and h7. And all in all, it should be just about a, a equal position. But in the game, king f8 was played and immediately Rachel replied with queen h4. Attacking the pawn and e7 and also attacking the pawn and h7. Dragana played e6. And in this position, we have a tactical alert. It is now um, white to play. And white can play a very beautiful tactical sequence to, to get up hand in the position. So in the game, Rachel did play knight e3. But just before we look at knight e3, we'll look at the opportunity that she missed in this position. She could have gone queen takes h7. And the point being... Well, the main point being if black plays e takes d5, taking a piece, there is the beautiful bishop h6. And the point being if black takes a bishop, there is now e takes d5. The rook cuts off the king's escape square. The queen is under attack and white is just threatening checkmate in one. So that's just one of the beautiful variation of playing queen takes h7. But back to the game, she did play knight e3, which is starting to cause some problems for, for white. The main point being she's just dropping a pawn and c3. So we have b takes c3, b takes c3, bishop takes c3, rook f1, and now h5 protecting the pawn rachel played knight c2 we have bishop g7 and knight e1 so the knight is trying to head over to the king size square and it was in this position that jorgana played rook a1 attacking the bishop and now it is rachel's move and she has a very she has a winning move right here. And that winning move would have been queen d8, checkmate. Now point to note that the players are playing um, 3 plus 2. So we expect sometimes that they will miss these moves. So she can be forgiven for missing that one. But this was starting to become a very difficult position. And missing that mating one could turn out to, to haunt her. But let's see the continuation in the game. She played knight f3 and Dragana replied with knight f6. Rachel played e5, d takes e5, knight takes e5, and now queen a4. In this position, Rachel played queen f4 and Dragana played queen takes f4. But if we backtrack just a, a move, we will see that Rachel could have um, drum up quite a bit of activity for her pieces if she had taken the queen. Queen takes a4, rook takes a4, and bishop e3 exerting a lot of pressure on the c5 pawn. Now if rook a5, Rachel could have gone rook b1. Black is up a pawn, but all of white's pieces are playing. There's idea of rook b8 check rook b7 
to attack the pawn and f7 and all in all black should be fine in this position and could probably play for a little more but she did play queen f4 and dragon took an f4 and bishop takes f4 rook takes f1 we have king takes f1 knight d5 hitting the bishop rachel played knight d7 check they're gonna play it king e7 attacking the knight on e7 and the bishop on f4 is still under attack she tried bishop e5 to say hey black if you take my knight i will take your bishop and i can keep playing but dragon has played f6 and we have knight takes c5 and f takes e5 so rachel is now up a sorry dragon is now up a whole piece rachel played knight e4 we have knight f4 king e1 and knight takes e1 and it was in this position that rachel resigned there's not much else to do she's down a piece and a pawn and it's a good idea to just save the strength because um this was um maybe the fifth match in the in the showdown and she needed to save some strength to play in the additional match so okay well thanks guys for watching and you can expect a daily analysis of games going forward so um we'll be looking through finding interesting games and be showing it to you all stay safe and hit that subscribe bell below and also drop a like on the video if you found it um, entertaining and i will catch you guys in the next one peace